In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you add and subtract fractions. And the, uh, the first one up here is we're adding four ninths and two ninths. So the, um, and I'm going to talk about why the denominators, the denominators are the bottom numbers and fractions, why they have to be the same. But they are the same in this one, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the second part. So four ninths and two ninths. Um, so, like, if you have four of something and two of the same kind of thing, then you have six of them all together. So, when we add fractions, you add the numerators. So, four and two add six, and it's their ninths. So, the answer would be six ninths. Now, sometimes um, uh, fraction answers or rational number answers can be written in a simpler form. And if the numerator and denominator are both divisible by the same number, then you can reduce it. So, for example, I can divide 3 into both of these. And so if I divide 6 by 3, I get 2. And if I divide 9 by 3, I get 3. So the simplest form of that answer is 2 thirds. Uh, so 6 ninths is correct. It just can be reduced to 2 thirds. And we normally try to write answers in a simplest reduced form. Now, second one is B. We have 3 quarters plus a half. And so notice in, in this case, the denominator is not the same. And actually, that's the same with every other example I have here. So I want to explain why or give an example of why the denominators have to be the same in order to be able to add or subtract fractions. So 3 quarters is the first fraction. So what 3 quarters means is that you've got something like a, a pizza, for example, that has four parts and all together. And 3 quarters means we have three of those four parts. So, for example, if I shade in here like this, okay, we have three of the four parts. Now, the half means that I have half of it. So if I divide it into two equal parts, then I have one of those two equal parts. And notice, if you think about, again, about this being a pizza, the pieces of the pizza aren't the same. See, these are all quarters, but this, is, this one down here is a half. And so what we have to do in the second one is if I draw a line here, like this, then now it has the same size pieces as this one. They're all quarters. And so now I can say, look, I have one, two, three, four, five quarters. So that's how much pizza I have. Five quarters would be, you know, just one quarter more than a full pizza. Now what we do algebraically over here is you look at the denominators, four and two. And you try to find the a, a multiple of 4 and 2 that's the same. It's often called the least common multiple. And the reason we use the least is because we want the smallest of those multiples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 2. And so I'm going to leave the 3 quarters alone. Now, sometimes the... Um, one of the denominators isn't the least common multiple or least common denominator. And so on top, 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 in the denominator is 4. And so now my uh, denominators are the same. See, 1 half of a pizza is the same as 2 quarters of a pizza. See, I originally had 1 of 2 pieces here, and now I, I'm writing it as 2 of 4 pieces. And so we can add 3 quarters and 2 quarters, to get five quarters. Now, one of the common misconceptions about adding fractions is that you add the denominators. And you don't do that. So, like, if, you know, it's not five-eighths, like if you add the fours together. The four represents what size the parts are. See, these are all quarters. So you, you don't add the denominators to get five-eighths. See, if I write five-eighths, well, that's not even a full pizza because uh, the 5 is smaller than the 8. That's actually just a little bit over half the pizza. Uh, but see, the, the size of the pieces are quarters, so that's why for adding quarters, it's still quarters. So we can just do, actually, actually, I will just erase that instead of doing that, because it's the right my pen. 
Now, um, sometimes you might want to leave the answer like this. Um, if you're asked to write answers as mixed numbers in simplest form, see, 4 goes into 5 one time, and then there would be 1 left over because 5 take away 4 is 1. So that would be 1 and a quarter if you're asked to write it as a mixed fraction. Okay? So again, 4 goes into 5 one time, and then if you, if you subtract 5 minus the single 4, that's where the 1 in the numerator comes from. So it's 1 and a quarter. So if you think of this, uh, see if I take this one here and put it up here, then I've got a full pizza, that's the 1, and then there'd be like the 1 quarter left over. Okay, so for C here, um, in order to add them, most of the time, like there are times when you can add fractions without bothering to change them into, uh, these are called improper fractions, you can leave them, uh, this is called mixed form, uh, but most of the time, like probably, uh, you know, 19 times out of 20, it's a good idea to change them into, so these are called improper fractions, what we're going to change these into. So two and three quarters, we want to figure out uh, how many quarters that will be. And then and then this one here, it's thirds. And then we'll talk about how you get the common denominator. So two and three quarters, in order to get the number that goes up here to put it in improper form, we multiply two by four and then add three. So two times four is eight, plus three would be 11. So, so what I'm doing in my calculator to do this, is I will go two times that four denominator and add three. So see that's eight plus three is 11, so that's why I have 11 here. So the next one, uh, it's one times three plus the two. So if we bring the calculator back, uh, one times the three denominator plus the two numerator on top. So this will be five thirds here. Here. Now, so I have uh, two fractions that I'm subtracting, don't have the same denominator, so again, we want to find the common denominator. In fact, if you find the smallest one, um, then that's usually the easiest one to work with. Um, there are larger denominators, but then you have to reduce more in the end. So, uh, if you think of the multiples of 4, I'm just going to write them out, 4, I'm just counting by 4s, 4, 8, 12, 16, etc. That's the first 4. And then 3, if you count by 3s, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, etc. See, 12 is the first multiple that's common, the same. So that's the least common denominator or least common multiple. So what you want to do is you want to figure, well, what do I multiply this by to make it 12? And what do I multiply this by to make it 12? So in the denominator, it's, it's, and if you forget, then you see you would take that common denominator and divide by four. So see this one, I'm going to multiply by three. And over here, if you take your common denominator and divide it by three, then you get four. So basically, I'm multiplying this one top and bottom by this denominator, and I'm multiplying this one top and bottom by the other denominator. See, sometimes the common denominator is actually the product of these. It's not always the case, but that happens a fair bit of the time. So, so I'm going to multiply this by 3. So 11 times 3 is 33, so we have 33 in the numerator, and 4 times 3 is 12 in the denominator. And then this one we're multiplying by 4 to make the denominator 12. So 5 times 4 is 20. And 3 times, oh, I wrote 12. Uh, I'm thinking 12. 3 times 4. Sorry about that. So 4 is 12 here. And then now, since the denominators are the same, we can subtract. So 13 minus 20 would be 13 twelfths. And like the last answer in B, this is an improper fraction because the numerator is a little bit bigger than the denominator. 
Now, 12 goes in the 13s just a single time, so it would win once. And then if you subtract 12 from 13, there's one left over, so it would be 1 and 1 12 as a mixed answer. A lot of times uh, it's acceptable to leave in this form, but if you want it in mixed form, that's what it would look like. Okay, uh, fourth example here, 11 thirtieths minus 7 six. So uh, 30 and 6 is the two denominators. We want to find the least common multiple of them. And so if I start writing multiples of 6, I'm just counting by 6. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Oh, look at that. 30 is a multiple of 6. So I don't really need to write multiples of 30, like 30, 60, 90. Uh, because as writing the multiples of the smaller number, I see that the fifth multiple of, of 6 is 30. So, and actually, see, that actually tells you what to multiply by, because it's 30 is the fifth multiple. So if I multiply this by 5, I'm going to make the denominator 30. That's the same over here. You see, see, 12 was the third multiple of 4, that's why I multiplied that one by 3, and 12 was the fourth multiple of 3, that's why I multiplied that by 4. So, uh, the 11 thirtieths we can leave alone. And then uh, 6 times 5 in the denominator is 30. So, 7 times 5 is 35. And so, now we can subtract them because they have the same denominator. So, 11 minus 35 and if you uh, is negative 24. Now, if you're not using a calculator, remember um, remember any uh, subtraction can be written as, so what we're actually doing here is taking 11 and subtracting 35. So that's the same as 11 plus, remember you can change any uh, subtraction into an equivalent addition, plus negative 35. And when you're doing that with integers, what you do is you need to subtract the numbers. And that subtracts to 24. So that's why the answer has 24 in it. And you see this integer has more negatives than the 11. In fact, it has 24 more. That's why the answer is negative 24. So it would be negative 24 thirtieths. Now that's not improper because 24 is smaller than 30, so we don't have to worry about changing it to a mix, but it can reduce like the first one here. So if you look at 24 and 30, think, try to think of a number that uh, they both divide evenly by. And you might say, well, they're even, so 2 goes into them. They actually both divide evenly by 3 as well. 3 goes into 30 evenly and 24. So because they divide by 2 and 3, 2 times 3 is 6, you actually could divide these both by 6 to reduce it the most right away. Because if you divide it by 3, you're going to have to reduce it again and divide it by 2 also. So 6 is the largest number that goes into both of those. Negative 24 divided by 6 is negative 4. And 30 divided by 6 is 5. So our final reduced answer in simplest form would be negative 4 fifths. Uh, e. Uh, so um, you have to think of your integer rules. Subtracting negative 2 and a half would be the same as, I'm going to rewrite my uh, first uh, fraction here, 4 and a third. So this, instead of, I can take the brackets off and change this into adding the opposite. So this is actually just the same as adding two and a half. So again, try to simplify as much as you can. So uh, the denominators are different, three and two. So uh, we're going to uh, change them to mixed numbers. So how many thirds is four and a third? Well, we do four times three is 12, plus the one in the numerator would be 13, so that's 13 thirds plus two and a half, so it's over two, the denominator is two. And so two times two is four, plus the one on top is five. So there's my uh, two uh, numbers written as uh, improper fractions. So I want to get a common denominator again. Three and two are my uh, denominators. 
And uh, their, their least common multiple, if we go 3, 6, 9, etc. And then for 2, counting by 2s, it's 2, 4, 6. Oh, there we go right away. See? There, there's the common, the least common multiple. So that's the least common denominator. So 6 is the second multiple of 2. So we multiply that by 2. So 13 times 2 would be 26 over 6. 3 times 2 is 6 in the denominator. And see, 6 is the third multiple of 2. So we multiply this by 3. So 5 times 3 is 15, 6. And so we, uh, we add these. So 26 and 15. Um, so if I'm doing this mentally, this is how what I would do this. I would go 20 and, and, one, and 10 is 30. And then I'm adding 11 to it because 6 and 5 is 11. So 30 and 11 more would be 41. So this would be 41, 6. And that's certainly improper because 41 is a lot bigger than 6. Now, if I want to... Uh, See, if I want to figure out how I change it to a mixed, see, 41 divided by 6, how many times does 6 go in evenly? Uh, well, it goes in 6 times. So our whole number part is 6, and then it's over 6, of course. And then, so in order to figure out the numerator, see, see 6 times 6 is 36. And so we take that numerator, the 41, and subtract 36. Whoops, I forgot my subtraction. Minus 36. So there's a 5 left in the numerator. So, and of course you can always check these. See, 6 times 6 is 36, plus 5 more makes that 41. So that 6 and 5, 6 is the uh, correct simplified answer. Okay, so last one here, 3 and 7 eighths minus 2 and 5 twelfths. So um, now adding a negative is the same as just subtracting. And I'm going to change my color just so that it, you can differentiate between my red up here and my purple down here. So the, uh, so and actually, let's uh, uh, change into uh, improper first as we go through here. So 3 times 8 is 24. And if you add 7 to that, that's 31. So this would be 31 eighths. And again, adding a negative is the same as just subtracting. And then 2 times 12 is 24, and 5 more, 24 plus 5. Okay, so you, you can always remember, you can always use your calculator usually. Uh, so 2 times 12 is 24, and then I want to add that 5. So 24 plus 5 is 29. So this would be 29 twelfths here. Now, the, we want to find the uh, common denominator, so 8 and 12. Now, 8 times 12 is 96. 96 would be a common denominator, but there's a smaller denominator that you can work with. So if you, if you list the multiples of 8, 8, 16, and if you add 8 more to that, you get 24. The multiples of 12, so you go 12, and see the second multiple of 12 is 24. There's the common denominator. That's the first common multiple. That's the one we should use. So 8, it's the third. So you see if I multiply this by 3, I'm going to get a 24 in the denominator. So 8 times 3 is 24 down here. So in the numerator, 31 times 3 is 30, oh, sorry, 90. Uh, I was I was I almost wrote it, uh, the wrong number. Uh, twelve. They see uh, the the second multiple of twelve is twenty four. So we would multiply this by two to get our common denominator. So over twenty four. Uh, twenty nine times two is fifty eight. Okay, and uh, you know you want to check to make sure those are right. See, I did thirty one times three over here, so that is 93, and then 29 times 2 okay, is the 58. So we want to subtract them, so 93 minus 58, 
So in the numerator, I'm going to have the 35. So we would have 35 24ths. And it's improper uh, because 35 is bigger than 24. So if we uh, we want to figure out, and you might be able to figure out, you know, 24 goes into that one time. If you're not too sure about that, divide it. See? So it goes in one time when I divide it, and one with a bit left over. So it's one, and then, you know, we have a certain number of 24ths here. So in order to figure out what goes in the numerator, you would just take 35 and subtract that single 24 from it. So that's the uh, numerator here. So this would be 11 24 So there are some examples of um, adding and subtracting fractions and uh, how you get the common denominator. And then, of course, in B here, I tried to explain why you need a common denominator. It's always so you're adding the same size parts or pieces of whatever. So I hope that helped uh, you be able to add and subtract fractions successfully.